the MD Solid software. We're going to use the MD Solid software to check our trusses for 217 to check our calculations. And uh, to do that, we open up MD Solids. And again, MD Solids is not a free program. It is something that uh, eSums has a license for. So uh, the software will have to be used on the student laptops. Um, and uh, there is a free version you can download and get a trial for. But you know, it's a trial. Uh, so eventually, you'll have to come back to the student laptop anyway. All right, so trusses. So we have trusses, right? And we're going to get this blank screen here. Okay, And this blank screen uh, has two buttons we are allowed, which is new truss and back. Of course, if I hit back, it would bring me back to that main menu. Uh, but if I hit New Trust, I'm going to get a little window that opens up in the top right corner. All right. And what we're doing here is we're defining the grid. So now, if I look at the truss in number four, right, in 2.1.7, the truss in number four, uh, I need at least a three foot by three foot square. So basically, if I think of it as I'm looking at how much distance do I have to cover to include all the members of my truss, all the joints, and all that. So I need a three by three, uh, uh, three by three foot space. So what I do is I'm going to take my horizontal spacing. I'm going to go by ones, right? And then I'm going to put three spaces horizontally and vertically. Okay. This will allow me to fill up the screen with with the truss and kind of get you know a nice uh, easy to use scale. So I hit OK, and then I get a nice three by three grid. Okay, with uh, zero zero uh, zero on the left and zero on the bottom there. All right, that doesn't matter too much, but what now we can do is now we can go ahead and design and draw this truss, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sketch the members. Now, when we have this grid, we get these options on the left side. We get to create and erase as one section, and then we also have a lot of ability to add members, add supports, and add loads, okay? So we'll start by drawing the members. Now, this particular truss is a right triangle. It's three feet by three feet with a hypotenuse that points down and right. So if I start sort of at the top right corner here, and I click my mouse, okay, and click and hold on that mouse, excuse me, uh, and then go down, it allows me to draw that member in on the truss, right? So that's one of the members in the truss, and also throws on the two joints on either end. And then my next member is going to be three feet also, right, on the bottom. So I start at that joint. And it does snap to grid, so you don't have to be exact. It's not like you have to have the mouse directly over the point, but it does snap to the uh, spacing that you threw on uh, in the first place. And then one more member to add, and that's right here. Okay, so our truss is set, and also notice that it does the angles for us too, right? How nice! All right, so our members of the truss are in. The next thing we have to add is we have to add the supports. So we can switch over to supports. And what we have to do is we have to tell it what joints are being supported and in what directions as well. So, for example, check this out. If we go to the top left, there's supposed to be a pin at this top left joint according to the 2.1.7 packet. So if I click this joint and then I drag left or right, right, and I'll drag left in this case, it's going to throw on a roller. Now that's not what we want, right? We don't want just to support on the, on the x-axis. We also want to support on the y. So if I click that joint again and drag up this time, it'll, dra it'll, it'll change that to a pin, OK? Now the placement of the pin, it looks you're looking at it right now and go, wait, that's not what it looks like on here. You can you can try to finagle that, right? If you try to draw it that way. But even still, right, it still kind of does the same way. Okay? It doesn't matter because that axis or that spot is being supported X and Y. So where they place it on here is irrelevant. Okay, so don't have to worry too much about that. Now down here on the on the uh, A point, there's a roller support. Now that roller support is supporting the x-axis because of its positioning. So again, if I click the joint and I draw to the left, all right, and then notice that they fix that positioning for me, right? So now it looks more like what's on the screen there. We got a roller support on the A on the spot here, and there's a pin support on the left uh, over here. So our supports are placed, members are placed. The last thing we have to do is place our load, okay? Or loads in this case, it's just a load, all right? And that load is on point C. Now, it will not let you place loads anywhere else other than the joints, OK? So you have to go to a joint, click, and then this time the, you have to point in the direction of the load, which, of course, is down. And then it will pop up with a little window that asks us how much. So we have to type that in. So we type in, of course, this is a 50-pound load. So we go 5-0, and we enter, right? And then it will place that load. So now we've got supports, we've got members, we've got the uh, load placed. The last thing to do is hit the compute button. The computer will process this way faster than we ever will. 
and it will tell us all we need to know about this truss. It will tell us that AB has no, uh, no force on it. So if you found that to be 0, 0.0 or 0, then you did it right. It'll tell us that BC, and this, by the way, it did, uh, it did assign A here, B here, and C here as well. Uh, so it did it kind of how we see it on the screen, on the, on the paper. It'll tell us that BC is in tension at 70.71 pounds. It'll also tell us that AC is in compression at 50 pounds. It also tells us our, our three reaction forces. AX and the direction too, right? So AX down here pointing to the right at 50 pounds, BX pointing to the left of 50 pounds, and BY pointing upward at 50 pounds, okay? So we can use this software to check our answers for our trusses, which is nice, right? Of course, it does not preclude us having to show the work in our engineering notebook, right? But it's, certain, sort, it's certainly sort of a did I do it right kind of check, right? And if you check your numbers and find out that mm, I, missed, uh, I missed BC, I got a different number for BC, you gotta go back and check why. Okay, make sure that you're not making some mathematical mistakes because of all the steps that are required in solving a truss, obviously a lot of chances to make a lot of mistakes. Okay. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we'll throw in our second truss. And uh, our second truss is gonna have a uh, uh, couple of reaction forces on the right. It looks like we need a two by four spacing. So we'll have to do, uh, and we can sort of go back and we can go to reset and it'll bring us up another uh, window uh, for that. All right, so maximize that. Here we go, new truss, right? Horizontal spacing and vertical spacing, we'll do one and one, all right? Now, because our, our truss is four feet wide, we need, our four, we need four spaces for horizontal. It's only two feet uh, high, so we can do two for the number of spaces on our vertical spacing. So we do four here, two here, and we get a nice grid, okay? Create that grid for us. All right, members first, right? So uh, looks like we start, we can start up here, if we kind of go left to right, we can go here. And then this is two feet over and two feet down, right? So I want to place it so that it shows up two feet by two feet. And then I've got another one here. That's two feet wide as well. Again, remember it snaps to grid, so you don't have to be exact. All right, another one there. There's another one here. Another one here, and another one here, and another one here. All right, so those are the members, right? That looks good. Okay, so members are on. Supports. We have a pin on E, top left, top right corner. We got a pin, so we're going to go drag a reaction force to the left, and we're drag a reaction force upward. And then on D, we have a support uh, on the x-axis. So there you go. We have a pin on the top right. Roller on the bottom right. All right, reactions are placed. Loads, this time we have two loads. We have a load on A with a magnitude of 500 pounds. And then we have a load on C with a magnitude of 500 pounds. All right, so those loads are placed. Our supports are placed, our members are placed. Remember how that took us about 45 minutes to calculate? One click of the button. All right, and we can check and make sure I even to make sure that we have all the right information. Right, we have three members in compression, we have two, three members in tension, and we have one that doesn't do anything other than add stability, I guess. Okay, and then our reaction forces are there, and we get all that stuff right out of the MD solids. We can use this again to check our answers, and uh, this truss is a little more complex, required a little bit more uh, method of joints study, right? But all of our uh, all of our forces should equate e equal out to this. Okay? And one of the things that's also handy about using this software for testing cuz one of the uh, things you're going to do in the uh, next two classes, you're going to be designing your own truss. So, uh, one of the things that is helpful for this is to analyze what your truss looks like and analyze where the load's going to be and you can determine where members should be stronger based on, you know, results like this. So, if we place loads here and here, we can see that this crossbar, this BE support here is, uh, is basically three times each load, right? Almost 1,500 pounds in tension. And then this one here is 1,500 pounds in compression. So these two members could be failure points if this truss were to ever break. And that's important to kind of, you know, obviously to, for, for static engineers to, uh, to, to, to know about, okay?
So that's, that's MD Solids. And uh, again, use those to check your answers. Have a nice day.